Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to tonight's um, free training on Facebook. Today is about manifesting the one, manifesting your divine compatible soulmate. This is one of the most popular topics that we ever talk about um, at Bergeon. It's usually money or love. Those are the top, top two. So um, I've been seeing your comments inside the Facebook group. Thank you very much. I'm going to get through um, your, your, your questions and things like that uh, this evening. So before we begin, before we begin today, I would like you to set an intention. Intention for the breakthrough, the awareness, the insight, or even a clear action step that you are going to receive at the end of today's training. So I'll just take a few moments and set your intentions. Okay, don't come from a place of desperation and fear and lack and scarcity. I want you to make that intention from a place of expansion. There is more than one compatible soulmate for you on this planet. There's not just the one, there's more than one. We live in a in a, in a universe of plenty and abundance, okay? You never worry that there is not enough oxygen for you to breathe, right? So the Creator didn't put you on the planet without more than one choice, more than one option for you, uh, for your soulmate or your uh, compatible partner. So step into the energy of abundance and overflow and that there is more than enough, more than enough love, more than enough soulmates, more than enough opportunities for you on this planet. And from that place, from that place, set your intention for this evening's training. What is the breakthrough, the aha moment, the insight that you would like to receive from today? May today be the, the stepping stone for you to realize something quite profound, something quite deep about yourself. Perhaps it might be the thing that's been really holding you back that you thought actually you were surprised that that was what was holding you back. Or it might be something you know, even deeper where you're open to be vulnerable and be real and authentic and honest with yourself about what's really been holding you back from manifesting and attracting that soulmate or letting go of a toxic relationship that you currently have so that you can make room for that divine compatible soulmate. So just close your eyes for me and just take a few moments to just set that intention now. What is the breakthrough, the aha moment, the insight, a question that you'd like an answer to, a breakthrough. Let this be the, the awakening or the catalyst for your transformation with ease and grace. Good. Okay, so let me know in the chat what was the intention that you set. So thank you. I see people have joined us. So uh, Marcella, Michelle, Lillianne. Rajna, Oyo, welcome. Some, some new, new names. Welcome, welcome. I've got Giada here online as well. Giada's part of our team at Bergeon. So she'll be answering some of your questions as well. So what intention did you set? Hi, Ellie. Thank you for my emojis. <laughs> Hi, Jasna. So what was the intention that you set? Let me know. Okay. So let's let's um, give you a, a first um, a understanding of what we mean by the the divine compatible soulmate. So you have more than one soulmate on this planet. More than one. Okay. There are hundreds of choices available to you uh, in different sort of age groups, in different geolocations, right? And as your soul grows and evolves, so if you're on a journey of personal development like myself, then you are continually growing and evolving. And so does the, I guess, the energetic level of your ideal soulmate. So who you were, say, five years and 10 years ago versus who you are now, the, your point of attraction of a soulmate will be very different to who you were, say, five, 10 years ago to who you are now. So just as you grow and evolve, so does the 
So does the quality, I guess, or energetic calibration of your ideal um, compatible soulmate, okay? So when you're doing, for example, like personal development classes like Betty Healing, every class that you do, every healing session that you do, you're growing and developing. And so your consciousness has raised, your self-worth has increased. And so therefore, the quality of the soulmate will also increase as well, okay? But when we talk about the, the one, the most divine compatible soulmate, this is not the other half of your soul, okay? God didn't create you as half a soul. You're a complete soul. You're not, nothing is missing. You're not looking for your other half to complete you. So that's a limiting belief. You definitely want to release that belief that somehow that you're looking for your other half and something is missing. Your life is not complete until you have this other person to complete you. That's, no, creator, created are uh, you as a complete and whole entire soul. So the, the divine, the divine compatible soulmate is someone that shares your divine timings. So what are divine timings? So in Theta Healing, we, we refer to divine timings as the promises you made before this incarnation. So this might be, for example, in my case, one of the promises I made before this incarnation was to teach Theta Healing. Okay, so I started uh, teaching back in, oh gosh, I, was, I was, became a practitioner in 20, 2008, a teacher in 2012, I think, 2012. Um, so one of my um, commitments I made before this incarnation is to teach thousands of practitioners and hundreds of them have become instructors now, hundreds, all around the world, all around the world. So that was one of my divine timings. Um, another one of my divine timings was to give birth to my two ch children, Austin and Maya, right? So divine timings are the things that you promised to do before incarnation. So it's not interfering with your free will. You agreed to these things before you came on this earth. And they're the things that intersect with the lives of other people that create some sort of impact on the planet, right? So divine timing is not necessarily the day you're going to get married, but the divine timing might be the marriage to your divine compatible soulmate, where you and your divine compatible soulmate share a destiny together in order to feel, fulfill a life purpose or mission, right? So sometimes you might see um, couples who are co-teaching courses and spiritual development seminars. Generally speaking, they would more than likely be divine compatible soulmates. So Viana and Guy Steibel, they're divine compatible soulmates. They share a divine timing together. And so not only are they lovers, husband and wife, but they also share the business and the mission and the cause of Theta Healy to spread it around the world. So this is what we mean by the one. So just because you manifest the one doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to have any arguments, that you're not going to get into any conflict, that you won't experience jealousy because you're a human being. You're a human being with emotions and we are sometimes reactive to certain things or we misread things, things get communicated or we say things that are hurtful to another person that we can never take back. So just because you meet the one, it's not going to be happily ever after that every relationship takes work, every relationship. So... I posted uh, pictures of me and my husband. So I met him when I was 23 years old. I'm 45 now. Um, we um, we moved in together within eight months. Within eight months, like I, I, well, literally within a week, I knew like he was going to be the father of my children. I just knew. I just knew. Um, but that's not to say that during our marriage, we didn't have challenges or problems. We, we certainly did. We certainly did. When we had children, it changed our relationship. When I gave birth, when I gave birth, it changed my relationship with my body and the way that I relate to my husband in, you know, during intimacy, right? A relationship will evolve and grow, and it must, it has to. You're either growing or dying. You're never staying the same. So just because you manifest your ideal compatible soulmate or, or the divine compatible soulmate, that relationship is still going to require work. However, when you deeply love that person, you're willing to do the work and it doesn't feel like work. You're willing to put in the effort. You're willing to be kind and thoughtful and caring. That, you know, if you take the person for granted, you do the work on yourself, you reset to reconnect to that relationship and allow that relationship to grow to new levels of connection and intimacy and a deeper knowing of this other person that you agree that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. So I want to kind of like debunk some myths. Like the first thing is, is like, for the, this is for ladies, right? A man is not a plan. A man is not a plan. You're not a Disney princess waiting to be rescued and he's going to pay off all your credit card debt, buy your beautiful castle on top of the hill and make everything go away and take care of you so you'll never have to worry about, you know, an oil change in the car or, you know, or, you know, having to clothe and feed yourself. He'll just take care of you in his big castle. Like, I think, you know, these these um, fantasy stories have done a great uh, disservice to women and their distortions about what 
a husband or lover or partner should be. It's like, he should make me happy. It's his job to make me happy. You know, he must compliment me and buy me things so that I can be, I feel loved and adored and respected, right? These are all beliefs that can cause um, a lot of damage in a relationship that that man may feel that um, the woman is a burden, that she's always like a child needing to be taken care of. And so the moment the husband's take care, taking care of you like a child with like the, you know, paying for everything, taking care of you, the relationship changes from husband to wife to father to daughter, which definitely messes up the sexual energy. Okay. So you definitely don't want that dynamic. So the first thing is, ladies, a man is not a plan. A man is not a plan. The man doesn't complete you. You're not a half. Okay. You're a whole person. So one of the, I guess the biggest um, blocks or resistance to love is you're looking to the other person to fill a gap within you right? Like, I'm not feeling loved. I'm not feeling fulfilled. You know, if I don't have a child, I'm not valid as a woman, right? I need the husband so I can, I can feel validated as a, as a woman in society that, you know, if I don't get married and have children of the house, then somehow I failed as a woman, right? We have these distortions about what it is to be uh, a lover, a wife, and a mother. So this is something you want to really dive into is, is, is some of these belief systems that you are carrying on a genetic level from your ancestors, and that's still sitting in the collective consciousness, right? You see it in movies, right? The damsel in distress, the woman gets rescued by the man, right? Or, you know, she's she's vulnerable and weak and helpless and, and he takes care of her and it's happily ever after. These are distortions. These are distortions uh, in regards to what is a healthy relationship. So you must never look to another person to try and complete. You must see yourself as a whole. So the first, the first step of manifesting your your soulmate divine compatible soulmate or all your most compatible soulmate is not coming from a place of lack like something is missing he needs to complete me he'll take care of me he'll keep me safe and again i'm referring to he a lot because the majority of my community is women we do have some men uh, in our classes if I'm, you know obviously i'm generalizing today but if you know if i'm saying she or he just it might be they as well okay so Never look to the other person to complete you. So in um, in uh, what is it? Manifesting abundance. When we teach our students how to manifest a soulmate, you 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 start with a list. A list of first before you want your stuff in a soulmate. Right. You start with what you have to offer. Right. So I'm just going to quickly cover that. So essentially, you're writing your bucket list. Okay. You're writing your bucket list. So you can do this on a piece of paper, and this might be a homework for you guys, okay? So two columns, you and the soulmate. And so what most people do when they're manifesting is like, children, I want, I want, my mind, give me, give me, give me, give me, right? <laughs> That's how most people manifest. So part of the keys to, to successful manifesting anything, including a soulmate, is what are you going to give in return? So when you start to write your, your list, you're writing down what you have to offer this relationship, why are you the prize? Why are you the catch, right? So you start to write down all the qualities. This might be your appearance, the things you like about yourself. This might be um, your value systems, for example, okay? Your, your mindset, the things that are important to you, right? So for me, um, for example, is um, creativity. I really value my creativity. That's, that's an asset. I feel that my creativity and innovation is definitely an asset in the relationship. So for you, what would be an asset? So as I'm going through this, type in the chat, guys. I want to hear, like, what have you got to offer this relationship? What have you got to offer this person? So let me know in the chat. What have you got to offer the person? Why are you the prize? Right. So this could be, again, like I said, physical appearance and your value systems. So um, I definitely am family oriented. Like I, I want, you know, I wanted children and I, and I got two beautiful children. Family was important to me. I definitely wanted to create my own family. Right. OK. Um, I'm a good businesswoman. That's one of my assets. I, I can be funny as well. I have a funny sense of humor. Okay, so let me know in the chat. Okay, a mor uh, morale, kind, sense of humor, beautiful, love it, kind, compassionate, love, Mina, yeah, keep it coming. Um, beauty, wisdom, love it, loyalty, care, support, what else? Keep it coming, guys. 
This is your opportunity to boast. Sell yourself to me. Intelligence, growth mindset, resourcefulness, love it. Um, funny, kind, charming, open-minded, healthy, good lungs. So does that mean that you've got like endurance and fitness? Delzinha, kind, caring. I'm an artist, a gardener, beautiful, nurturing, beautiful. What else? Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. What else? What, what do you love about yourself? What do you have to offer this relationship? Who's good in bed? Who's good at sex? Who's a good kisser? Values, knowledge, trust, loyalty, joyful, wisdom, goofy. I love that. It's nice when you can um, make fun of yourself and not take yourself too seriously. Intelligent, loyal, humorous, funny, adventurous, artistic. Thank you, Ella. Morale, sensuality. Yes, sensuality. Um, Madhibi, respect my soul. Uh, Samaya, amazing cook. I was wondering when somebody was going to say that. Amazing cooks. Who are my amazing cooks in, this, in the room? My husband's an amazing cook. He does all the cooking. <laughs> um, Rosie, supporter, passionate. Also a good cook. Love it. You guys are making me hungry. Yeah. Um, Samaya, good love maker. Yes, when you can be generous. Instead of thinking of yourself and you know just purely self-gratification, easy pleasing me, it's like that you enjoy pleasing your partner during love making. Integrity, great at massage. Ooh, love it. Love it. Lillian, I can, I'm a good listener, so I can hear and I, I can also talk. Yeah, beautiful, caring, supportive. Amazing. Right, so that's what we're going to be doing as homework, is really listing down at least 10 um, qualities that you like about yourself. And this might be your appearance. So you might you know, have great boobs or a great bum or beautiful eyes or lovely lips or gorgeous hair. So what are the things that you love about your appearance? Okay, and then, and also your value systems as well, right? So, you know, spiritual, right? Is that one of your value systems? Spiritual. So when I first met my husband, I wasn't spiritual. I wasn't necessarily awakened, I should say. I wasn't awakened. Yeah, that's something that developed later. Yeah, very giving in the bedroom. Love it. Loving humor, wisdom, trust, joy. Yeah, love it. Beautiful. So now that we have our list of all our qualities, now you already start listing the qualities in your soulmate. Okay, so what are the things that you would love to have in your in your soulmate? So like for me, I definitely like honesty. Honesty, loyalty, they're like my, my top two. Loyalty, honesty, loyalty. Um, and that came from a previous experience where my, my boyfriend cheated on me and broke my heart. So for me, loyalty. Um, monogamy was also very important to me. I'm not interested in sharing my husband with anyone. <laughs> so monogamy. Um, a great father, generous, good with money, because my last boyfriend was bad with money. Yeah, so what are the qualities that you would love in this, in this, this soulmate? Okay, ladies, we've got Roy in the room. He's a great Caribbean cook. You guys are making me hungry. Also cooking spiritual, um, open-minded. Um, okay, I love that Lillian, feeling his feeling. Yes, so emotional intelligence, love it. Yes, it can be very difficult to be in a relationship with someone who is not tapped in their emotions. They're very much in their head and, they're, and they really can't connect how they feel and therefore can affect the way they communicate. So emotional intelligence. Yeah, my husband has that, so tick. Blue eyes. I love blue eyes. My husband has blue eyes. I manifested my husband. Honest, kind, confident, monogamy, family oriented, generous, handy. I wish I'd put that on my list. My husband's not so handy. <laughs> he has many talents, but DIY is not one of them, but he makes up for in other areas. I love that handy. Yes, they can, you know, put in a shelf, screw in a screw. Yeah, love that. Someone who accepts as you are and respects you and your talents. Yes. So you, this is about not trying to, not having someone trying to change you. So this may come from previous experience where someone tried to change you. They, they, you know, they, you showed the real you and there's certain things they didn't like about you and they tried to change you. So that's probably the wrong soulmate. So you would never want somebody to change you and therefore you would not want to change somebody else. So you're accepting someone for who and what they are. Yeah. 
self-aware fun yes fun my husband actually is very funny especially after a few drinks he's he's hilarious he's got a very good sense of humor fun self-aware positive yes so instead of someone who's always thinking that there's you know the cup is always half empty it's always doom and gloom always sees the negative side of things you know you say something good and it tears you down or she tears you down or they tear you down right so someone who's positive and optimistic yeah yeah love it love it solution focused that's a good one solution focused hope you guys are writing some of these down there's some really good juice in here a man with a growth mindset yes some yeah absolutely yeah my husband's grown a lot since we we first got together in our early 20s it's important that someone is willing and available to grow rather than stay stuck and they're in their comfort zone and not want to change particularly if you're you know in the in the healing arts or personal development you're constantly growing constantly and they must evolve they don't necessarily have to be on the same path as you right my husband's never done a thirteen class he's had sessions but he's never done thirteen class he's on his own personal journey of personal growth with um the, the books and programs that he watches but we're both on a path of growth right because what can happen is if you're on a city path of growth and your soulmate is not they either like they'll get they'll get left behind or they'll be forced to catch up right yeah <laughs> i love it i mean a man with muscles there's nothing wrong with manifesting a man with muscles <laughs> my husband has muscles yes <laughs> he's just got that build he hardly works out and when he does he just builds muscle he's just got one of those physiques yeah um love it muscles muscles yeah passionate yes so so many who's who is comfortable ex expressing their passion right passion for the relationship passion for life yeah yes love it accountable accountable yes someone who's accountable for themselves yeah <laughs> dilzenia willing to eat vegan dishes yes my husband's had vegan yeah willing and open yeah we sometimes we do vegan yeah yeah, love it love it rather than um, uh, someone who thinks well this it's not a meal without meat on the plate right yeah knows how to communicate love it beautiful so what else what else what else do you want in that soulmate do you what do you desire do you want someone who is grounded and practical or someone who's just very sort of airy and visionary and etheric yeah emotionally devoted yes devotion is very important that relationship yeah has integrity also important yeah yeah loves animals and nature yeah beautiful open-minded okay what about hobbies and interests what hobbies and interests would you like to share with your soulmate so one of the things like I, I I used to work as a graphic designer, web designer slash interior designer. I've done lots of different um, life purposes, if you will. And uh, I'm very artistic and very creative. So like I love going to art galleries. I love different types of music, like you know Cuban music, Latin music, you know classical, jazz. So you know when my husband and I were, were um, when we came to the UK, you know we were members of Ronnie Scott's the the jazz club. And you know, this this was before children. We, we would go on weekends uh, up to Soho and just you know enjoy you know an evening of jazz. Like this is the, this is how we fed and nourished relationship through shared experiences through shared experiences. So having commonality and interest is is important is important. So like for me personal development is a career but also a passion it's also a passion right so i'm constantly growing constantly developing i'm sharing books and things that i read insights i have deep conversations with my husband about the meaning of the universe and all sorts of you know um unconventional conversations i enjoy those conversations yeah so delzing yet grounded yet visionary loves bike riding yes yes keep it coming guys um can dance willing to try new things yep so I love that Mina. Yes. Yes, so someone who's open to doing new things. Yeah. Uh, Barbara interested in music, dance, movies, culture, food, traveling. Mhm. Mm um oh, I like that um Sabohan. I love traveling off the beaten track. Yes. Me and my husband also have that. Yeah. So when we go on holiday, we'll ride the elephants or we'll climb, you know, the the jungles that are ridden with mosquitoes, you know, we'll lay by the pool for a day or two, but then we're wanting to explore the real authentic um, part of the, the city or country. Yeah. 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 Loves to travel. Uh, Ella fitness. Yes. Yeah. So someone who's interested in fitness, 
Absolutely. Yeah. So who can enjoy, you know, a drink or a nice meal, but also is passionate about like exercising, taking care of themselves, right? About longevity, um, taking care of their, their, their appearance so they're not neglecting themselves, right? Taking pride in self-care. Yeah. Because how they treat themselves is also going to be a reflection of how they treat you as well. Yeah. I love that. So fitness, psychology, art, deep talk. Yes. Yeah, someone who's not a, who's available to have those those deep conversations and not get uncomfortable. Someone who is also comfortable with those silences. You know, you have a really good soulmate when you're able to sit in silence and no one's getting like weirded out. Yeah, yeah. Loves to be spontaneous. Takes fun adventures. I like that. I like that, Narelle. Hope you guys are getting inspired by some of these. Open to plant medicine. Yes. Well, I'll just give it to my husband. He just takes it. <laughs> it's like, here, drink this. He's like, he doesn't even ask. <laughs> he just knows it's good for him. <laughs> he trusts me. Abundant. Yes. Yeah. So someone who's perhaps, you know, um, you know, abundant in health, abundant in good friends, abundant in money, like is able to be good with money, stable with money, knows how to create money. Yeah. Yeah. Adventurous. Fabulous. Fabulous. So, yeah. So your list should kind of sort sort of look like this. So you've got your list and then your soulmate. So what you want to look at your list is you want to look side by side, and you, what you're looking for is am I a vibrational match to this soulmate? Am I in energetic alignment? So basic law of attraction, law, law of attraction, the one of the one of the rules of manifesting. There's like 12 of them but this is just one rule of manifesting is the law of attraction which means like attracts like so you're you're looking to attract someone who is on the same energetic alignment who matches that matches your frequency right okay so you're not looking to have a soulmate to fill a void in something that you don't have you're looking to share a common interest you're looking to share common value systems right so if you're wanting to manifest someone who's into fitness and self-care then you must walk your walk talk your talk right? Are you taking care of your self-care? Are you exercising? Are you doing your green juices and your green powders and your collagen and, and your, your cholera, blue-green algae, going walks in nature, riding your bike? Are you doing these things already or are you waiting till the soulmate shows up before you begin to live your life and start taking care of yourself, right? So when you're looking at this list, it's like attracts like it's about being in energetic alignment, in energetic alignment. So um, there's a beautiful um, quote by Rumi, which is, um, it, oh, I can't remember now, it goes along the lines of like, it's about releasing your barriers to love. So love wants to come to you, like you want to attract the love. So you've been trying to manifest this, this soulmate to you and whether it's a compatible soulmate or the most divine compatible soulmate to complete, help you complete your mission here on earth. But right? you've been manifesting, you've been asking, you've been asking, you've been asking. And some of you are like, well, the clock's ticking, like where the freaking hell is he or she or they i've been waiting i've been manifesting i you know i've been doing my vision boards right i've got my little candles and i've got my little rose quartz crystals under my bed and been you know been doing all my journaling doing all, where is he where is he where is he right if you are manifesting and you're asking and you're like where is he where is he where is he well, that tells me that you are doubting that person is being ordered from the universe. If you're like, they haven't showed up, they're not here, this is not working. What are you doing is you're undoing your manifestation because you're focusing on lack. You're focusing on lack. So in the, in the context of the law of attraction, you must feel the feelings and embody the feelings as though that soulmate is already in your life. Right? So on a practical level, what does this mean? It might mean getting two bedside tables instead of having one. It might be having a double bed, sorry, a queen size bed instead of a double. It might be having a space for, you know, two spots for a toothbrush, right? So if you're expecting, if you're expecting a soulmate, it's about preparation. Like you've manifested, you've asked for it. It's a done deal. They are on their way. Let's prepare my space to allow a soulmate in right? That may me mean the time. Are you creating time and space for the soulmate to show up in your life, right? So are you really busy, 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 busy with work, 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 and you're not actually making time to go out there and date and meet new people because you're trying to fill up your time because you're feeling lonely. And so you keep being so busy with work, your life is so stuffed with work or another distraction 
that you haven't made room for the soulmate. So it might be time in your calendar and it might be like physically space in your home for that soulmate. So if you're expecting a soulmate, you've got to make room for it. There's a beautiful story um, in, um, I think it's in the, I think it's in the Bible when uh, Moses went up to the, to, um, he was taking the, 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 um, the Jews across the desert and uh and uh the the people said you know go pray to your god for rain go pray to your god for rain so M moses went up the mountain to go pray to god for rain and he you know comes back down and he's like you know like you, you know your god has failed us your god is down like where's the rain and moses said well if you're expecting it to rain you'd have dug the ditches right if you're expecting that soulmate make preparations Right. So if you're like a manifesting, manifesting, but you're not making any preparations, what it tells me is you're really doubting that what you're asking for, you're going to receive. Right. So that's an that's a digging process where you uncover either through theta healing or through uh, journaling where you uncover like, what is my fear to really allowing a soulmate into my life? Which takes me to this next piece. As Rumi says, your job is to release the resistance to love. Love wants to come to you. That soulmate wants to come to you. You've been asking, you've been praying, you've been meditating, lighting candles, doing rituals, right? You've, you know, you've been looking, looking, where are they, where are they, where are they? And you're waiting, waiting, waiting. And for some of you, it's like the clock's ticking. I want to have a child. Like, and, you, and it's from energy of desperation and panic, which is, again, the wrong energy to come from a place of manifesting. You must feel as though the, the soulmate's already in your life. But if you've got belief systems that say, well, the last time I got in a relationship, they hurt me, they abused me, they cheated on me, right? They took money from me, they took they took advantage of me, they manipulated me. The last time I allowed myself to open myself up and be vulnerable, be real, they tore me down, they broke me apart, I lost my confidence. Then somewhere in your subconscious mind, there's a belief that says, love is not safe, love is abuse, love is pain, love is rejection, love is abandonment. And so now what you have are distorted beliefs about what love is, that you're wanting the love because there's an aspect of you that wants the, the passion, the romance, the connection, all the things you mentioned in the chat, like part of you wants that, but there's another part of you deep in your subconscious mind that's, that remembers the hurtful, painful experiences you had of the past and that becomes the filter through which you're now viewing love. So the only way to allow yourself to open up to receive and accept the love the love is trying to come to you but you've got your gate, gates closed because of these beliefs these beliefs that were created from previous experiences so let me let me give you an example so if you've experienced a soulmate let's just say for example and i came across a client recently and this is more common than people realize is a man who was cheating on his wife she felt very betrayed, she felt very hurt, but she felt stuck in the relationship. She felt she couldn't leave because there were children involved. And so she was tolerating this relationship for years, tolerating, right? Scared. So I had to explain to her that when a man cheats, he's not cheating on her because she's not good enough or beautiful enough or sexy enough or a fantastic mother. He's not cheating because she's not good enough. He's cheating because he doesn't think he's enough. He's sabotaging the relationship. He doesn't feel worthy on a subconscious level and he cheats. And often the case, the woman that he's cheating with is less than the wife that he has, right? Because it's someone on a lower level where he can feel like he's the man, he's superior because he doesn't feel good enough for the beautiful wife and family that he has created. So whenever another person cheats, it's not because you're, you're not good enough or pretty enough or attractive enough or sexy enough or bad in bed or you know not a bad kisser or, or, or not attractive or too fat or too skinny or too tall. It's got nothing to do with you. It's all about them and then how they feel, right? A soulmate who loves themselves, honor themselves, respect themselves. And if they're unhappy in a relationship because it's that you, you've grown, you've changed, would be honest and have that conversation with you. They wouldn't go out and cheat. That's a coward. That would be a coward. A man or, or a woman who is unhappy in a relationship, but who is confident in themselves, would have that conversation with their soul and say, look, we've grown apart. This is not fair to you. I'm no longer in love. And, you know, I think we, you know, we, we need to separate. 
who I, you know, I still love you as a person, but I'm no longer in love. They'll have that conversation, that person, before they entered in another relationship, right? What person who loves themselves would never, never cheat, right? So the, the, the whoever hurt you, whoever punished you, rejected you, abandoned you, it wasn't aimed at you. Although you were in the firing line, it wasn't about you, it was all about them. They didn't think they were good enough. That's why they had those behaviors. So the first thing I'd like to release is I would like to release from you anywhere that you are blaming yourself for where a relationship went bad, where you were you were judged, criticized. So another example might be emotional abuse. Again, very common, where the other partner is criticizing you, judging you, attacking you, punishing you, right? Being malicious, you know, all these digs at you, like peck, 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 peck. And after months and years, like, it's like you're covered in these like these like psychic wounds, like knives and daggers in your energetic field and your confidence lowers. And then you end up stay, staying stuck in this relationship because literally and energetically you're covered in all these bruises. This person has worn you down with their attack. But whenever someone's judging you saying you're this, you're this, you're this, who are they talking? They're talking about themselves. People project their crap onto you. So again, it's got nothing to do with you. It's all got to do with them. So if, again, if a person feels deeply insecure, not good enough, they're going to try and put you down so they can make themselves feel better, right? So actually their attacks are not even about you. All they're doing is projecting their crap onto you. But again, if you're in the firing line, you're like, oh, I'm not pretty enough. Oh, you know, I, I didn't do this. You know, I didn't iron the shirts. I didn't make the dinner. Or maybe I'm getting too fat. Like, And you think it's all about you and it's not. If a person's judging you, attacking you, it's coming out from their own insecurity, okay? So let's do our first healing, everyone. Let's do our first healing. I want you to close your eyes and just, I want you just to, nice deep breath. Relax into your body. Just feeling your consciousness expanding past the universe into through layers and layers of light. Expanding through the laws of the universe, the law of attraction, the law of magnetism. <sighs> There's no law of love. That's the energy of the, of the creator of all that is. It's expanding past the laws, expanding into this beautiful, pearly, iridescent white light, bright, bright white light, the energy of pure consciousness, the energy of love. Okay, so we're going to ask the creator of all that is to forgive, not the other person. You're going to forgive yourself for believing the lies, believing all the things that other person told you. It might have been weeks, months, years, all the knives and daggers, the psychic attack they sent you. We are going to forgive ourselves for allowing that to happen. Forgiving ourselves that we weren't strong enough or courageous enough or powerful enough to see through those lies. And if you like, you might like to put your arms around yourself like in a hug. You might like to caress your shoulders or you might like to put your hand on your heart, whatever feels good right now. And if there are tears, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> your eyes are meant to water. It's a normal human function. Everything is energy, including tears. If, you, if it feels emotional to forgive yourself and love yourself, just allow the tears. It's all good. Finally, finally, you can forgive yourself. Or you allowed someone to disrespect you, dishonor you, cheat you, manipulate you, hurt you, abandon you, reject you, or you made it about you. Forgiving yourself. where you misunderstood what was happening, that all that was happening was the other person was projecting their own insecurities onto you. They didn't have the courage to be honest with you. And that's okay. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But this is about you forgiving yourself. And you may feel as a beautiful divine light comes in through your crown chakra, through your body, into your heart, you might feel a warm energy circling around your heart, soothing you. It might be gold, it might be pink, it might be green. 
might be violet. You just might feel a warmth or a buzzing in your chest. And so feel the presence of Kuan Yin, and she's an ascended master for compassion. And so if you like, you can allow Kuan Yin to aid in your healing today, to have compassion for yourself. And for some of you, that might have been the rejection, the hurt you experienced by your parents. It might have been your mother or your father that made you feel unloved, rejected, not good enough. Just allow that light to come in. Allow the floodgates to open. Allow more and more light to come into your heart. Filling you with this divine love. So you can remember who you are without these labels, without these distortions. Don't forget to breathe. Breath brings spirit into the body. Allow it in. Beautiful. And now we're going to cut the cords. So we're going to invoke Archangel Michael to come with his seat, shield and sword of light to come and cut all the cords. The cords to all the negative, traumatic, painful relationships that you no longer need to carry those with you as a reminder of what happened last time. Because as long as you carry those people with you, you take them to every relationship, right? And you're wondering, why does it keep happening to me? Why does it keep happening to me? Because you're carrying cords to previous relationships. And the only way to have this clean slate is you must forgive and let go of the past. You can no longer hold on to those painful experiences as your um, filter through which you view others, right? If you want a new soulmate, you must let go of the old ones. Right? Forgiveness doesn't necessarily um, atone them for their, for their sins, if you will. It's to forgive yourself and to free yourself from that person. There were valuable lessons you learned from those relationships. Right? You learned that you're actually really strong. Perhaps you learned you're so strong that you don't need anybody. Now you're so independent, you've rejected love because of that strength. Right? You can be strong and allow a soulmate into your life. You can be strong together. Right? And so I want you to see, feel, sense as Archangel Michael comes and cuts the cords to all those previous painful relationships and releases them with forgiveness. And again, this might be your parents, it might be siblings, it might be your first soulmate that broke your heart. It might be a long-term relationship that you're too scared to leave because you've been pecked at for years and years. It's time to cut that cord so you can be free. And the moment you release yourself of these people, you claim your power. You claim your truth. And so see, feel, sense as those cords are cut and released. Sending all those people forgiveness. Letting them go. But you no longer need to hold on to these people as a way to protect yourself. Because if you're using that memory of the trauma of abuse or rejection or abandonment as your protection, then you're using trauma and abandonment as your protection. That might be your problem. Okay? Forgiveness is your greatest protection. Love is your greatest protection. When you are radiating the energy of love, what are you an energetic vibration, vibrational match to? More love more love that's why you want to forgive and let go it just requires courage on your part do you are you willing to have the courage today to be free of those relationships free of those old stories old identities if you are just say yes out loud and feel those cords being cut Letting go of the need for vengeance, revenge, to teach someone a lesson. 
letting go of hatred, the resentment, the grudges, letting it all go. This is toxic energy that weighs you down. You no longer need this. It's safe for you to let this go. It's not who you are. So I'm tuning into everyone. Some of you are kind of are still a little scared to let this go. So I'll ask you, what are you afraid is going to happen if you let go of these old stories about what love is, what relationships are, what marriage is, what intimacy is? What are you scared is going to happen when you let go of these old stories as your reminders? Are you scared that you're going to have to be vulnerable? Are you scared that you're going to have to be truthful? Are you scared that maybe there is no one out there that's going to love you when they find out the real you because you're afraid that there's nothing there? What is your fear? How is this, how are these painful experiences protecting you? Let me know in the chat. Scared of the unknown. So Barbara, can you be certain about anything really? What can you be certain about? Right? We live in a universe of unknowns. We can set intentions, we can manifest, we can make plans. But things are never going to work out 100%. And the truth is when we surrender to the flow and God's guidance and we really are allowing ourselves to be soul-led, then the most, pu most perfect thing manifests. So when you embrace the unknown, you embrace the adventure, then you allow all the abundance to come to you. Ellie, can we show you and teach you that, that it's possible for you to fall in love again? That you can love a person more deeply than you loved the last person? That it's possible to expand into greater depths of love, connection, intimacy with soulmate? That it's safe to be intimate? Yeah, so Mal, if you're expecting disappointment and hurt, you attract it. So what would life look like without fearing that a person will disappoint you? When you let go of expectations, when you let go of them trying to be responsible for your happiness, being responsible to make sure that you feel good about yourself, being responsible for making sure that you feel worthy. If you let go of all those projections of that person being responsible for your emotional state, that you claim full accountability and sovereignty over your emotions, your feelings, and they do the same, right? Then there is no disappointment. If you let go of expectations, that you accept that person for whom what they are, and it's reflected back to you. So Ollie, scared of not knowing what relationships are. So you get to define that for yourself. There are so many ways to do relationships. There's not just one rule, right? So many ways to do relationships. There's so many ways to be a parent, right? You got to do what's right for you. So Ollie, I want you to take some time out and, and journal on what would be the ideal, not perfect, the ideal relationship that you would like to have. What, what You get to define that. You get to create that. Yeah, what would be the ideal relationship? Like if I had to experience my perfect day with my compatible soulmate, what would be the ideal perfect day? How would that be shared? Yeah? Are you both waking up at, you know, 7 a.m. and going to the gym and working out, going for a swim, hiking, climbing mountains, riding elephants, on going on adventures, right? Or are you sleeping until noon, making love for four hours, you know, you know, going by the seaside for a stroll? Like you get to paint the picture of what your perfect relationship is. Yeah. It might be all of those things. Ah, that's a common one, Arshdeep. The fear you'll lose your freedom. Yes. So this is in the collective consciousness of many cultures, many, many women. The belief, like, if I get married, when I take my husband's last name, I become his property. <laughs> right? So it wasn't too long ago that women didn't have a vote. 
you know, it wasn't too long ago that, you know, women, you know, didn't really have many freedoms of, you know, education, right, or, you know, actual expression. So some of these programs, they're still running the subconscious mind, even though we live in a modern world. Um, right now, what's happening with Afghanistan, it feels like we've gone back 20 years, right? Yeah. So let's release anywhere that you are possession, right? So this goes for like women wanting to own men. Like if he's my husband, I own him. That's not healthy either. Okay. So let's release ownership of our soulmate, right? Anywhere that you believe or feel that you are property or that you are owned, anywhere that you believe that your money is their money, right? Um, anywhere that you uh, are scared that a marriage or a committed relationship is a prison, any, let's release anywhere that you must produce children and you must produce a firstborn son. Let's release you of any vows, oaths and contracts to do so, so that you are free to have children, right? You are free, okay, rather than that you must. Is that okay? So if you're watching the replay, the healings still work. You just need to say yes out loud or yes into the chat, okay? And it's like a pre-scheduled healing above the universe, okay, above the planet. So when you say yes, this healing will be done for you. Thank you. Oh, that feels better. Wow. That feels better. Okay. Let's release anywhere that you feel like you have to be the alpha in the relationship. Someone seeking to be dominant over another person. That is a recipe for disaster, right? Think of a relationship as the king and queen relationship, right? Where the queen is the advisor to the king. The king seeks the queen's guidance and counsel. He trusts her right and the king um you know is is honoring and respecting his queen likewise the queen honors and respects the king they are equals right no one's sitting higher up on the on the on the plat platform right they're sitting they're sitting equal okay so it's bringing that energy of equality equality what's happening with the camera there we go So you no longer need to compete, right? There we go. That's better. Much better. Shifting the energy to collaboration. In your relationship, it's much more fun when you collaborate as a team. That's why you enter into a marriage. Like, hey, we can achieve more together. That's why. It's a, it's a team, right? Yeah, good. Equality. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, I'm also going to release curses. <laughs> it's something we can do in better healing. It takes two seconds. Don't panic. Don't worry. So anywhere that you are carrying, and it's, it's, for some of you, it's a generational curse. It's not something that's been done to you. It's sitting in your DNA. It's like a curse from a previous ancestor. So anywhere you've been cursed with no children, as in cursed to be barren, uh, cursed without love, we're going to release those. Is that okay? Thank you. okay good fabulous okay okay guys so you now need to start telling a new story a new story so we've done some energy clearing okay you now need to start telling a new story a new story about about the list we wrote about okay the list we there we go the list you and your soulmate so the new story is that that you are already already fully complete that you're not missing you're not you're not a half you're not looking for your other half you're not looking to be rescued or say that the soulmate's not gonna make your problems go away that you're already full and complete right you must feel that you are all full and complete what's wrong with this camera it's not behaving today yeah that you're already full and complete start telling the story of that you are loved and you are lovable, that you are worthy and deserving of that divine compatible soulmate. When you talk to your friends, you're gonna be speaking to your friends with optimism and, 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 and faith, and it's like a done deal. That's the energy you're going to be in. You're going to receive guidance and insight over the coming days as, as things you might like to do to get ready for the soulmate. So I talked about this earlier in today's training about like maybe getting the second bedside table, may, maybe getting a fresh pair of sheets. So um, if you're wanting to manifest a new soulmate, don't get white bed sheets. In Feng Shui, white bed sheets is kind of purity. So if you wanna live like a nun, okay, get white bed sheets. If you want passion and romance, it's usually the reds and the burgundies, okay? That's fire chi, fire chi. So you want like 
to bring in the romance into the bedroom. Let the universe know like you're preparing your space for the soulmate, okay? All right? Um, you're having that list, writing that list um, of what your qualities are and the, and the qualities of your soulmate. You can use the Thady Manifesting Method. Um, there's uh, the meditation, there's a manifesting meditation on SoundCloud um, that you can go check out. You can use that to manifest the ideal compatible soulmate. Once you have your list, once you have your list, you're declaring that into the universe. And as you declare it to the universe, you're feeling as though it's already happened. Not one day, I hope it's going to happen, fingers crossed. If you're doing this and you're doubting, you want to have a look at some of your belief systems. You want to dive into what is going in my subconscious mind that is my resistance to love, right? So as I'm tuning in, some of you, some of you, there's some childhood stuff related to your father. So it might be abandonment, abandonment, rejection, or abuse. That needs healing. So your issues with trying to attract a, a soulmate might have to do with the abuse, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, or sexual related to your father. That requires you to do the, do the work. So that might be with private sessions or in a theta healing class, okay? Um, for some of you, it's um, your resistance to forgiving someone who really hurt you. You're still getting something from it. Maybe you're thinking it's, I'm stronger this way, that what if this happens again? And so you're still holding on to the story as a way to protect yourself. And I said before, if you're using those previous stories to protect yourself, you're using abuse as your protection. And this is why you're, you're not attracting the right soulmate. It's because you're, you're, you're carrying the blueprint or the, the energetic pattern that love is abuse, that love is hurt, right? So that requires like a deeper digging session to find out like, what are you getting by holding on to this? How is it serving you? Because you want the soulmate, but it's like this. You want the soulmate, but the fear of having one is greater, right? So we want to shift or tilt the scales, right? And that's what you learn on the feeding classes is to, to shift the scales. And so when you do a healing, you're not deleting that that person, you know, abused you or hurt you or attacked you. We're not deleting and pretending it never happened. It happened. But the healing occurs when you understand what was what were you learning from that painful experience there's a blessing in every lesson there's a blessing in every lesson all right so were you learning to be strong were you learning enough is enough i need to really really get rid of this person re release this toxic person from my life because i'm better than this i deserve to be respected i deserve to be spoken to kindly right um, where perhaps you were learning the lesson of, you know, asserting yourself or speaking up perhaps as a, you know, younger, you were being suppressed and you weren't allowed to express yourself. And maybe that person was teaching you like through being punished and silence, like enough is enough. I feel, I feel silence in this relationship. I need to leave. So that's what you're going to uncover in the classes is the blessing behind the lesson. That's the healing. That's the spontaneous instant healing when you become aware of the lesson and so then you can release that person release that story to keep teaching you that lesson that you are strong or you are independent or that you are worthy sometimes we learn that we are worthy through being disrespected when we say enough is enough we assert our boundaries and we walk away from a relationship right but we hold on to that story because we think oh if i remember what they did to me then it won't happen again but if you're holding on to that story, you take that story like a ball and chain to every relationship, every relationship. So it's going to be forgiveness work, which we do on advanced class. It's going to be releasing vows, oaths, and commitments. Really release some of those vows and oaths and commitments today around like having to produce children, having to be a firstborn son, right? Being the property, release some of those vows, oaths, and commitments. But there are more layers to this. So again, those are done on the feeding advanced class, the vows, oaths, and commitments. There's the manifesting process. You'll learn that on a feeding basic course on how to successfully manifest the things that you desire in your life. And it's not a super secret method. It's really about aligning to the frequency of vibration of love and manifesting from that place. Not from scarcity, not from lack. You cannot manifest your soulmate from a place of, where is he? They're not arrived yet. I feel alone. I feel unloved. I feel hurt. You can't manifest because you're not in energetic alignment. So what the healing does in these classes is to release all the resistance to love, whether it's a, the love of a soulmate, right? Whether it's love of friendships, abundance, whether it's money or health, right? Abundance comes in many forms. As you release your resistance, your stuff will show up so fast, it will blow you away, blow you away. Some of you might have seen um, Selma's testimonial on our, on our um 
on our website. So Selma came to us as a student and she'd already had a previous relationship with children and it was quite traumatic. And she's like, oh, I don't want to marry again. I don't have children again. Like it, it was, it was, it was too painful. If I get into a relationship, what if it, it turns out bad? I'm left with an, yet another child that I have to raise by myself. So she came to the classes, she did the work um, and she found her divine compatible soulmate, her divine compatible soulmate. And, you know, Selma got such amazing results. We actually invited her to become a practitioner on our team because she was someone who was committed to the journey. You've got to be willing to do the work, right? You've got to be willing to take accountability responsibility for yourself and take that step to work on yourself and whether that's with you know a failing buddy whether it's coming to the classes or a session you must be willing to show up and do the deep work but before i finish today i want to leave you with a last thought let go of waiting let go of waiting that one day i'll be happy one day when the soulmate arrives i can have the child and then my life will be complete one day i'll start this journey one day when i have the money or the time then i'll do the courses one day because one day never comes the time is now guys the time is now you must make the bold move make the committed action say you know what my time is now I desire this now I'm taking full accountability what am I led by my soul to do or to create or to feel or to embody in order to have the life that I want All right if you want that soulmate and you are committed to having that soulmate that divine compatible soulmate the one or the most compatible soulmate if that's what you're wanting, then you must be willing to do the work. You'll do whatever it takes. And part of that is letting go of those old stories. If you're ready to release those old stories, then I invite you to join us on the Thinking Basic course. That's where most people start their journey on this three-day transformation. So I think Jada's going to post the link for you guys. Um, you can go check out uh, the page there. You'll see um, Selma's testimonial along with um, others as well. Um, you know, people who've manifested um, spontaneous remissions of, of physical challenges, people who've uh, manifested babies as well, manifested children are using this technique. Your job is to show up, to do the work, to do the inner work. And that's one of the things I love about Betty Healing is it works, it works fast. If you show up and you do the work, you must be willing to have the courage to show up. So thank you so much for joining me. So before we wrap up, let me know your biggest aha moment, awareness, something that clicked for you today, a realization, a deeper understanding. Let me know in the chat. I'd love to know what you took away from today's training. It was a very popular topic. We've got a lot of people on today. What was your big takeaway, aha moment, a realization, an awareness, an insight? <laughs> Thank you for my emojis. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome, Lillianne, Jasna. Thank you. Barbara, cutting the cords and letting go of old stories. Yes. Your your homework is to write down the the list. Right, write your list to the universe, you and the soulmate, yeah, and then writing the de writing down the perfect ideal relationship, what you see as a perfect ideal relationship, not what Hollywood movie st stories tell you or Disney tells you, right? What is your ideal relationship? What does that look like for you? Beautiful, Sabon. No more waiting. The future is now. Yes, yes. Absolutely. You decide to be happy now, not one day when the soulmate arrives, one day when you make your millions, one day when you've lost the five kilos, right? The time is now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Live now. Oh, thank you, Delzina. Everything was stellar. Yeah. Um, Raziri Amor, letting go of cruelty. Yes. Be willing to forgive. It takes courage to forgive. Vinayak, you're welcome. Miller, no more waiting. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yoki, um, feeling soft inside, serenity and love. Good. You want to stay in this vibe. You want to stay in this vibe. This will be saved to the Facebook page. So you're welcome to re-listen to it again. To like continue to calibrate to this frequency. 
of self-love. Yes, Ella, forgiving yourself. Yes, it begins with you first. It begins with you first. Yes. Forgive and let go. Satya, forgiving myself for past relationships, letting go of the realization I'm complete. Yes, you are complete. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I would love to see you inside the Thinning Basic class. Uh, if you enroll on the Life Awakening, which is the package, you also get um, three private healing sessions with our advanced Theta Healers as well, and a bunch of other bonuses as well. So there's a Thinning Basic class where you can start, or I invite the Life Awakening, which includes the basic, advanced, dig deeper, and the you and the creator courses. These are transformational classes, and it's it's the, one of the fastest techniques I've come across. I've done lots of different modalities. Theta healing is like the bomb. It just changes beliefs really quick, really fast. Um, but you have to show up and do the work, right? You have to take accountability. So how badly do you want your manifestations, right? It's going to be so excited. It's going to be so juicy and, 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 and passionate about what you're wanting that you'll do whatever it takes to have it. And that means showing up and doing the work. Thank you so much. Till next time. Lots of love. Bye.